Hi, I'm Captain John Franklin, owner of the uh, fishing vessel Oregon. Um, boat was built in 1946. Uh, have been doing this all my life. Third generation fisherman, and bought this boat in 1991 from uh, a fellow who bought it at an auction for six thousand dollars. And uh, I thought I got a steal when I bought it for fifty-five thousand. Uh, they were going to make a reef project out of it in South Carolina and it belonged to South Carolina Fish and Wildlife. They had auctioned it, this fellow bought it, had dreams of making it into a uh, shrimp processor. Never managed to make that happen and, and spent two years of moorage, decided to get rid of it and uh, I found it in Boats and Arbors and uh, my favorite publication of all time. <laughs> anyway. The boat was in Charleston, South Carolina, so I went to pick it up. Um, spent four and a half months in Charleston getting ready, and we sailed to the Dominican Republic with a load of paint for a friend of mine in exchange for engine parts. This boat used to have a uh, DMG 36 Enterprise, which is a direct reversible, slow speed, turned 400 RPM wide open, weighed 37,800 pounds. And uh, made 400 or 600 horsepower, 400 RPM. At any rate, so we get to Dominican Republic, and we do the the usual uh, get to town, go through customs, go have a few cocktails, and have a good time. Well, we spent we were spending four days there, and the uh, owner of the boat, my buddy in the Dominican Republic that it, I was getting the parts from, he had an, an old boat that he broke the crank in. I was buying the cylinder heads, the pistons, um, all the spares that he had in exchange for this paint, which they have 100% duty on their stuff, and I basically was smuggling the paint in and taking his engine parts out. So he had a watchman who stayed on his boat to keep people off his boat, and that watchman decided that he could make a few extra bucks by putting stowaways on board my boat. and. We were getting ready to leave, that we are going to leave on a Saturday, because everybody knows you can't leave on Friday. And so we get word uh, Friday night that the uh, these stowaways were on the boat. So I tell the crew to, you know, turn the boat upside down. They looked them up, couldn't find them. I had a 39 foot aluminum uh, pleasure boat on the stern that I was hauling around from Charleston back to Washington. And they weren't in that. So we started going through the fish holds, and in the port forward hold, it had been set up when this boat was a research boat as a uh, storage facility. So they had rack that, that was about two feet wide all the way around the perimeter of the hatch, um, and there was three different racks in there. And we had stored, I, there was a bunch of old growth fur on board the boat that I kept stacked it up and there was a space about three feet from the floor. Well these guys had burrowed down and there was five of them hidden underneath of there. So we started, you know, I, I found them. As soon as I opened the hatch I could smell them. It smelled like garlic and B.O. It was bad. And so I go down there with a the mag light and I'm hanging upside down like a bat with a flashlight on and I, here's these guys, they're all got their eyes and their mouths closed, hoping I don't see them. So anyway, we started fishing them out. Prior to that, the second night we were there, we noticed that money started coming up missing out of our wallets and a pocket knife. These guys were already on the boat. They were crawling in while we were asleep and rummaging our wallets. So, of course, we wanted our money back and our pocket knives and the other shit they stole. And so, we brought him up out and the first guy out was the bat, the baddest guy and he immediately starts swinging so we have to restrain him we kind of we finally get him calmed down and my friend Joe who lives down there um, he was friends with what's the Marine de Guerre which is their Navy and so he says hey I gotta go to the cops and tell them what's going on so he goes to the cops and it's about 4:30. Well, they're all getting ready for the weekend. They're going home. They don't want nothing to do with this. So they asked Joe, well, where are you holding these guys? Well, we got one guy on the second deck head 
we got him stuffed in there, and then we got one guy in each of the aft four holds. He said, and the lieutenant in charge says, well, just lock the hatch down, leave him, we'll, we'll come get him tomorrow. Let him suffer overnight. So we're, we come down and start uh, going to chain the hatch down. And these guys start popping up out of there. And the way the, the hatches, the aft four hatches are arranged, there was four hatch covers. They start popping up like jack-in-the-boxes. And in the engine parts that I got from Joe were the push rods for the Enterprise, which are about that long, an inch and a half diameter, hollow chrome molly pipe. So they come out after us with these, and this huge Donnybrook erupts on the deck, and we get in this big fight. A couple of them made it overboard. One guy with a broken, broken knee. And they, in the meantime, the guy that put him on board the boat was on the beach. There was a small riot starting on the beach. He's got a flare gun shooting flares at us. And this is a true story. I have corroborating witnesses for this. The guys are all there, are still alive. And uh, so Joe has to go back and get the Marina gear. Well, they're all, they're mad as hell. So they come down. We got these guys to do the three guys. One guy never made it out of the head. Two other guys, they got, they got a little roughed up. And uh, the uh, lieutenant in charge didn't speak English. So he's asking through this uh, interpreter who kind of looks like a bad used car salesman, gold chains and all this stuff. Spoke really good English, but kind of a sleazy looking cat. <laughs> asking me how come we don't have any marks on us. And I'm trying to explain, you know, the one guy that I beat up a little bit, um, he popped up in front of me and I got him in a chokehold. And he went um, to try to crush my testicles. Luckily, my pants were hanging a little bit low and he missed. And I roughed him up a little bit. His ear was swollen and his eye was black. And, and uh, when I tried to explain to him, I made the motion like grabbing my testicles. I dissed the guy. He pulls the nine millimeter and holds it right to my head. And of course, I just about fell over. So they arrest the whole, they arrest everybody. They take us all off the boat, gunpoint. We march us back to the Marine Guard, throw us in the jail. And I say to my buddy Joe, I said, geez, Joe, how, I mean, what, what's gonna happen? Are we gonna be here all, we're gonna be here all weekend? And he goes, well, we very well could be. Luckily, he had made a call to the ship's agent who brokered my customs and did all the, all the paperwork, who was British Vice Consul for the Dominican Republic. He, get, he makes a phone call. He knows this whole thing's going down. He, heard, he hears through the grapevine that we're all in jail. So he calls the Commandant, who two and a half hours later, they get a hold of this Commandant and they spring us. Then they put a guard on the boat for the night in case these guys try to do anything. And uh, the next day, um, is in all good third world countries, somebody has to get their palms greased, so it cost me 400 bucks to make it all go away. But uh, yeah, not too many people can say they survived third world jail, <laughs> but I can. <laughs>